Hello and welcome to week three and uh, we're gonna have a probably a shorter week this week because of Easter break coming up but we're gonna learn look at refraction today and then lenses in the next video which should hopefully be a short video some of this is going to sound review because we talked about refraction when we talked um, about waves and water in general now we're going to talk about specifically light waves if you remember I had this picture up before um, in the previous unit and we used the example of a, uh, a wagon pushed at your lawn you can be in the wagon if you want you push the wagon at the lawn and it slows down when you go onto the new surface onto the new medium and that's the same thing that happens when light passes through a window it's going and then it hits the window and it slows down because you're going it's going through a new medium it changes its speed but then we also remember that I said, what happens if you push your wagon at your lawn, this time diagonally at your lawn? You're going to hit your lawn, and one wheel's going to hit first and slow down. The other wheels are going to keep going fast. You're going to twist. Your wagon, if I push you diagonally, is going to twist when you hit the lawn. That's what's happening here. Now, if you hit straight, here we have this light hits at a 90 degree angle here, pretty 90 degree-ish. Oh, I still have some stuff to erase from before. Sloppy me. All right. Where am I? Doppler airplane. When it hits at a 90 degree here, it goes pretty straight. But if it hits at an angle, like your wagon, it's going to turn in leaving bright spots and where it turned away from I don't know if you can read that it's okay that says dark which is why when you go swimming in a month or two you have bright spots and dark spots because the surface is all jumbled water is hitting at different angles and then is twisting at different angles because it's entering a new medium so with refraction, the point of refraction is that when you light enters a new medium, it turns. It turns. This is how lenses work, how your eyeballs work. We turn the light because it now entered your eyeball. It gets hung up on the edge, just like your wagon hitting, um, hitting that lawn. Here's my, here's my family. But look here, we have this campfire. But as I take the picture, look at that. Can you see that at all? You can look at the notes that you download. I gave blood today, that's what's on my arm here. Um, here, this is, the light is getting refracted through the hot air. So the light that traveled from the block wall over the fire, that is like a new medium. It's like a new medium. Going through a different temperature of air is like going through a completely different medium. And then it twists. That's why you can see little bright spots and dark spots. Just like your pool bottom, you get bright and dark. All right, let's see another example of refraction. If you see it enough, it'll make sense. Here's an example, an analogy, if you will. We have this lifeguard and this lifeguard needs to get to this distressed swimmer out here. Now, we'd say, oh, shouldn't the fastest route be a straight line? Normally, yes. However, the lifeguard runs faster than he swims. So what would be actually better for the lifeguard is to spend more time on land and run out here and then cut in. And then cut in and do less swimming, more running, less swimming. It's faster. It turns out to be a faster route through. That's not why it does it, to go faster through the object, but it gets snagged is why. Let's look at these examples. Here's your window. Here's light passing through your window. It doesn't just go straight diagonal. It curves as it hits the glass, and then as it exits the glass, it speeds back up again. It untwists itself 
as one part exits first. So as it enters a slower medium, it twists in. As it enters a faster medium, it twists back out again. If the light just goes straight through from A, B, well, that is the fastest drop. That's like getting shoved straight at your lawn. Being shoved straight at your lawn, it's not going to turn. It's just going to smack. It's going to slow down, but then it's going to speed up as soon as it leaves again. Here, let's see this example here. I can recreate this one for you. Let's make it dark. Oh, before I do, I have this beaker full of water. I'm going to make it cloudy. There, I put some baking soda in there. That doesn't dissolve very well, so that's what I want. Hopefully it's not too cloudy. Now, let's see. That would be fine. All right. Now, watch. So, if I shine my laser straight down, the light goes straight down. If I make waves, look, my, my laser moves. Not because I'm moving the laser, but because the water is moving the laser light. Now, I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to stick it instead of just straight down where it goes. It hits, slows down, and goes, keeps going straight. But watch. If I tilt it, let me shine this at an angle. Look there. Let me get closer. Hopefully not so much that I get out of focus here. Look at that. See, it's getting caught on the edge. Just like when mom and dad drive through a puddle, a deep puddle with the car, and it's only on the right side. The puddle's on the right side of the car. The car gets twist, twisted. It gets turned into the puddle because the right side of the car slowed down. The left side of the car kept going fast. So look how that, the steeper angle I make, the more um, um, obvious it becomes. Now, if I just go straight down, it just hits and slows down and just goes straight. But I think that lawn analogy is very useful. Okay. That's pretty neat. Okay. So that's what they're trying to show with this one. In this one, they're, they're showing the root beer mug and the light. This thick glass on the outside. And Well, here I have a better picture to show you. You can analyze that picture more if you want. But look at this picture. This picture captures it better. Here's, I'm at a, a Shields. You ever been to a Shields? It's like a... Bass Pro Shop kind of thing. They got fish and stuff. There's Heidi. Look at her. There's me. Where's the other half of me? Where did it go? I know it's there. Did you hear, did you hear about the guy that uh, was chopped in half? He's all right now. It's a joke. Okay. There. Look. I'm all left here. Where's the right side of me? Okay. So that light got turned. It's spitting out somewhere else. Now, look there, there's Sammy. So there's Heidi, there's Sammy. You see a little piece of her head and a little piece of her feet, but where's the rest of her? That light has gotten rerouted elsewhere because of refraction. That's what a lens does. Light gets turned. Let's keep going. We're gonna skip this one. People might wanna to try to work with invisibility and things. You can read that article if it's really interesting to you. It's not an imperative that you read it. All right, even the sun's light gets rerouted because first it goes through the void of space no medium and that's one of the neat things about light is it doesn't need a medium but now it, all of a sudden it's going to hit this thick heavy blanket of atmosphere and it's like a wet sponge and the light poof, slows down it's still going fast but it slows down and gets snagged on it so when the sun is actually truly here here's where we have the sun and it, it's coming out of the air, and it should, this light should have just gone like that. But here that light hits the air and twists straight into his eyes. If it twists straight into his eyes, see this, this light's coming straight in. So guess where he thinks the light is? He thinks the sun is straight out. Well, let's look at this example with some, well, okay, let's do this one first, and then we'll look at some fish examples. Well, uh, when you have a lunar eclipse, a lunar eclipse, remember back to last year, you know, the, the moon is behind the earth, so it's all dark. But sometimes we end up with the blood moon. So the way a blood moon happens is the light was supposed to, from the sun, skip the moon completely and just go above it and below it. But some of the light hit the atmosphere and twisted in. This light hit the atmosphere and twisted in. And like a magnifying glass with a focal point, 
it puts the focal point right on the moon. And it turns out to be red. Why red? Why not blue? Why not green? Because this light, sunsets are red. And we're going to talk about why sunsets are red on another day. But this is, this is sunset over here, and this is sunset over there. So the light that's passing through, the only light that made it to this point was the red light. The rest of the light gets stuck up here, we'll learn. But the red light is what we see at sunset. And then also, the sun, this should be 3D, right? And so the light should also be heading in this way. It's all red light from those sunsets, all landing on that moon, like a magnifying glass. So it's like a, imagine, this is like you fry the, the ant with your magnifying glass. Maybe I'm the only one that's ever done that. But this would be your ant. Then you got this big, round lens of an atmosphere at your magnifying glass, and <laughs> pulls it right in. All those sunsets diverted. Now let's talk about the fish. And this guy says, hey, I see a fish. Yeah, you do. All right, except this fish is... He thinks it's here. Why does he think it's here? Here's this floating eyeball out here. Ooh, got two mediums, air and water. He thinks it's here. Why? Because that's where the light's coming from. The light's coming from here, so he thinks it's here. But what he doesn't realize is the light came from there and then turned that direction. It came out and twisted. Let's show you some examples of this. Um, this fish here is the same fish as this. So I'm at an aquarium. This is in Lake Tahoe, the Taylor, um, Taylor Creek Stream Profile Center, if you've ever been to Tahoe. Um, they have a, a small nature center with a, a, a tiny, tiny aquarium uh, feature there built into a river. And I took this picture, and we can see this. This is the fish, and this is the fish. But which one do I grab at? If I want to catch this fish with my hands, uh, should, I, should I smash through the glass there or up here? The thing is, the fish, the light left, uh, left the water, and instead of going up, came and twisted into my camera. And then the light also came straight out of the window and twisted into my camera. So I got the fish twice. Because the light got twisted and turned, I got light where it wasn't supposed to come from. So if I want to try to catch this fish, and I'm standing on the beach, I'm going to grab here. You know what's going to happen when I grab here? He is going to swim away because the light got turned. It can play tricks with us. So, if I was going to try to throw a spear at the fish, where am I going to throw it? Should I throw it right at it? I should throw it under it. Now, here, I don't know if this is a trick question, but it's a tricky question. I'm going to shoot this fish with a laser. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, I'm going to shoot that fish with a laser. Where should I shoot my laser? At the fish or below the fish because the light got turned? Now this is a tricky question because this time I'm not throwing a spear, I'm throwing light at it. Guess what my laser light's going to do? When it hits the water, it's going to turn. It's going to twist and turn into the fish. So, I should aim it at the fish because my laser itself is going to turn. Remember how it turned? All right. Where the, if I, I, I'm trapped on an island and I want to catch this fish, and it, it's, it's swimming around me, and I have no fishing pole, where should I stand so where, where it appears it actually is? Where should I stand? Off to the side? Far away? Straight over top of it? Straight over top of it. Because the light comes straight up and it doesn't turn. It changes speed, but it just goes the, the same direction. And I can just throw it on the ground and hit it with a stick. I don't eat fish.